Welcome to the third video in this series on probability distributions. This one today is the hypergeometric distribution. And I've got a feeling this one might uh, stir up a little bit more interest than the others, perhaps due to its relevance to card playing, and in particular, poker. The classic example of a hypergeometric distribution is a five card poker hand. And here I've got the probability distribution of the number of spades in a five card poker hand. So out of five cards, you can either have zero spades, one, two, three, four, or five spades. And that collectively is a hypergeometric distribution. But let's find out why. Now for our quick rundown, the first thing we can note is that it's a discrete distribution, much like the binomial and Poisson distributions. So you can only get discrete whole number outcomes from your distribution. You can't, for example, get 1.5 spades in your poker hand. And it's equivalent to the binomial distribution, but without replacement. So this is why a card playing analogy actually really works. Because when you've selected one card in your hand, the probabilities of getting a spade or getting an ace or anything like that, the probabilities change for that second draw from the pack. Because you've already got one card in your hand. Now, if you had actually replaced that first card back in the deck and took another sample from the deck of cards, then that would be a binomial distribution. But not here. As I said, the probability of success changes with each draw. And that depends on what you've actually selected in that first draw as well. Now, this one's defined for three parameters, capital N, capital A, and lowercase n. Which means that for a set combination of these three values, you've got your particular hypergeometric distribution. So, what do these three parameters represent? Capital N is the total population size. So in the case of a deck of cards, N is 52. Capital A is the total items of interest in the population. And if we're concerning ourselves with the number of spades in a deck of cards, then that's going to be 13, because there are 13 spades. And N is the sample size. And if we're dealing with a poker hand, N is going to be five, because you have five cards that you're selecting out of the total 52. All right. So what's the probability mass function for the hypergeometric distribution? Well, it gets given this fairly horrid looking formula, but all these are, are just those combination functions. So you see these sort of elongated brackets with A and X here. That's the same as writing A with a C and then X. So you might have seen that before saying the number of ways you can choose X items out of a population of A. Now we've got three of those combination functions here. Nonetheless, you can use your calculator to find them. And if, say, we were interested in finding the probability of getting two spades in our five card poker hand, we'd be after just the height of this bar here, the probability of getting exactly two. And to get that, we first need to figure out what each of these values represent. Capital N being 52, capital A being 13, little n being five, and X being two. X here is the number of items of interest in our sample. And if you sub in all that into the formula, you'll get 0.274. So there's a 27.4% chance of getting two spades in a five card poker hand. Now you don't need to use that formula and a calculator to do this. Excel has a handy suite of functions that'll help us with these distribution type questions. So if you go equals hypegeom.dist, it'll provide for you the probability mass function, so long as you put in the correct pieces of information. So you can see there's quite a bit of information you need to include in this formula. The first piece is our value of x, which is the number of items of interest in our sample or the number of successes in our sample that we're considering, in this case, two. The next piece of information is lowercase n, then you've got capital A, and then you've got uppercase n. So it kind of goes in reverse from the way I've written it up here. And just be careful, they have to actually be in that exact order. And the final thing to note is that we have to write false because this final argument determines whether it's a cumulative distribution that we're interested in or not. And of course, in this case, we are not. 
We want just the probability mass function, which is the height of that one discrete outcome. And that's 0 0.274. So how would we find the cumulative distribution function for the hypergeometric distribution? Well, that has a big, huge, ugly formula. So we're not going to really do it by hand. However, what we can do if we wanted to find the cumulative distribution at 2, meaning the probability of getting 2, 1, and 0 combined, we can just do the same thing, but make sure we write true in that final argument. And that'll add up those three columns for us to provide us with 0 0.907. So that's the combination of those three there. And you can also find the expected value of the number of successes in your sample or number of spades in our sample here, which is just little n, which is five in our example, five cards, times by a on n, which is quite intuitive really. If you know that there's 13 spades out of 52, this is going to be a quarter. So there's a quarter of a chance of an individual card being a spade. So out of five cards, you're expecting five times a quarter, which is five on four. Five on four spades, so 1.25 spades is the expected number from five cards. The variance is some big long formula here, which you can find manually if you'd like, but that's rarely particularly relevant. So here's a question for you. It involves a game of Texas Hold'em. And just as a background, I've provided you just a few sentences here to explain the important parts of Texas Hold'em for those that might not be so familiar. It's a variant of poker where each player holds two cards in their hand. Now, five additional cards are then dealt as common cards on the table for all the players. So each player then can see a total of seven cards. That's two in their hand and five on the table. Now, a flush occurs when a player can see a set of five cards from the same suit. So out of your seven cards that you can see, if five of them are the same suit, then you can call that a flush. Okay, so Poz is dealt the following hand in a game of Texas Hold'em against his longtime rival, Puck. So he's got a queen and a jack of diamonds. What's the probability that Poz scores a flush? That is, after the five cards are dealt on the table. Right, so just pausing this and giving it a go yourself to see if you get the correct answer. But I'm going to jump straight to it. So to get a flush, Poz needs an additional three diamonds from the five common cards. So this is definitely a hypergeometric distribution with the following properties. Now he's already got two cards in his hand. So realistically, we've got a population of 50 unknown cards. That's why N is 50. And out of those 50 cards, we know that 11 of them are diamonds. There's a total of 13, but he already knows that two of them are in his hand. There are about to be five cards dealt from that 50. And so we're after the, the probability of three, four, or five diamonds being dealt into those five cards. So if we were to draw up the distribution, you can see that it's going to be three, four, and five summed up, all these yellow columns here. Five, of course, is going to be a very, very unlikely occurrence, but nonetheless, a real probability. So if you're going to do this using Excel, which is probably advisable, you can go equals one minus the hypergeometric distribution where I've put in two as my number of successes of interest here. And the reason why I've put in two is that I'm going to use the cumulative distribution and the cumulative distribution goes two and below. So even though I want this yellow region up here, I'm going to go one minus this green region down here, one minus two, one and zero. And that'll get me the remaining yellow region up here. Because we know that the total of all these bars must sum to one because it's a probability distribution. So if you just use Excel, you'll get 0 0.063998. Now I'm sure a few of you are thinking, wait a minute. Poz can also get a flush if all five common cards are of the same suit. So even though he has two diamonds in his hand, so he's got an advantage in diamonds, he can still get a flush in hearts if just by chance all of those five cards 
are hearts, right? So the total probability of him getting a flush involves the probability of him getting a flush in diamonds, which we already know, that's what we just calculated. The probability of him getting a flush in hearts. Now, if you're going to do that, this would be the formula you'd put in there. We need five hearts out of a total of five cards where 13 hearts exist in the deck with a total population of 50. And we make sure we put in false for that final argument because that tells us it's going to be the PMF, the probability mass function at that point. And if you do that, you get a very small probability, but nonetheless, there is a probability of just getting five hearts dealt out in a row. And that would be the same for spades and clubs as well, because obviously the suit doesn't make a difference. So if you tally all that up, you have a total probability of 6.58% of Poz getting a flush, which is not that high, is it? Now that's about it, but I've left you with a bonus question because I was keen on seeing whether that's significantly higher than say another hand where you have off suits. So let's just say that Puck is dealt the following hand here, a three of clubs and an eight of hearts. What's the probability that Puck scores a flush? Now let's just assume that Puck can't see Poz's cards. So this is the probability of Puck scoring a flush as it appears to Puck. And I'll put my answer at the bottom of the description of this video. So you can check to see if we've got the same answer. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Here are some links if you want to keep in touch or suggest other videos you might want to see.